Assertiveness, part two. There are lots of different cultural differences when we're talking about assertive behavior. Not all cultures are focused on moving toward that assertive behavior. You have to realize that although the term manipulation has a negative connotation in our society, man manipulation in itself is not a maladaptive behavior. It is taught and accepted in some cultures. It can be considered maladaptive if the feelings and needs of others are disregarded. Other people are treated as objects to fulfill the needs of the manipulator. The assertive approach is the best when you are dealing with a negative manipulator, but it will be met with resistance and resentment. Maladaptive interactions will show the lack of concern for others' needs and feelings. You have the seducer. They initiate a relationship with others, then seek favors or privileges because of that relationship. The passive aggressive focus on another person's weaknesses and then exploits that knowledge. They're basically your best friend, they learn all the good and bad about you, and then they exploit that knowledge. And divide and conquer. They sow seeds of distrust by telling half-truths. They spread rumors or gossip or innuendos. Work-related issues and aggressiveness can be very stressful to deal with. And they do take place most often against healthcare workers, especially nurses. Contributing factors are going to be personal factors, communication, workplace practices such as staff shortages, environmental factors such as the location of the care being provided, and risk diagnosis. Nurses can and should protect themselves by having an escape route planned if you are fearing physical violence. Don't ever block a door to try and keep someone in. Maintain an open stance. In other words, not a closed stance. A closed stance would be like crossing your legs or crossing your arms while you're communicating. Keep at least five to seven feet between you and the potentially violent person. Make certain that you remain calm and never turn your back on a potentially violent person. And you can and should advocate for a safer workplace. The prevention of workplace violence is an important safety issue in hospitals and other healthcare facilities. The workplace is any location where an employee performs a work-related activity, so it may not be necessarily at a facility. There's four categories of workplace violence employee, domestic, property, and commercial. Well, four categories of violence. Contributing factors, again, are personal, workplace, and environmental. So, in the OSHA National Guidelines for Deterring Violence, in the United States, there's a general duty clause in this OSHA Act that includes recognized threats of violence. So let's look at employee violence. Look for early signs, which would include unusual behavioral changes, lack of cooperation with nursing supervisors, cursing or other hostile forms of communication, a short fuse or frequent arguments, spreading gossip or rumors that harm others deliberately, uninvited sexual remarks, 
hostile responses to other nurses, clients, or family members, sleep disturbances that are mentioned during the work hours, increased irritability and anxiety. The next stage of workplace violence will be conversation that's focused on poor me, I'm the victim. Notes that have threats or violent or sexual content. Verbalization that includes plans or a desire to harm someone. Stealing workplace property. Being less interested in the work and workplace assignments. Increased arguments. Increased physical accidents or injuries. And then as the anger intensifies, you may see behaviors that are directed towards oneself that might include depression or suicidal threats, or behaviors directed towards others that might include physical fighting, property destruction, or use of a weapon to harm others. So what can the nurse do? You, of course, will make a personal commitment to practice prevention guidelines at least you should. Recognize signs of potential employee violence. Know your company's policies and prevention guidelines. Make certain that you participate in the training and any refresher courses that are offered by the health care agency. Take advantage of programs that are offered by the police department or other agencies. And advocate assertively for implementing prevention policies. And make certain that you have a plan if you feel like you're in danger. So you need to be alert to warning signs and think through what you can do. Be prepared before workplace violence becomes an issue. Remember that your focus is on gentle self-defense, not offense. Take all threats seriously. Report all threats to management. Hospitals and other health care settings do employ security personnel. Know how to reach them at all times. Use your own instincts and assessment skills and never be reluctant to ask for help. So what about sexual harassment? Verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature is a condition of employment or advancement. This um, is considered to be sexual har harassment. If you perform sexually or some sexual act, then I will hire you or I will promote you. It can also be a hostile environment where the advances intimidate, offend, or interfere with the nurse's ability to do their work. More than 50% of female nurses, <coughs> excuse me, and one-third of male nurses believe that they've been sexually harassed. It's not about sex or passion, but it's more about the abuse of power. Claims of harassment should be taken seriously and investigated. Now, some behavior may not specifically violate company policy, even if it upsets the complaining party. For example, uh, one employee shows more than an average interest in another's personal life. Can this be perceived as harassment? While some situations might not require investigation, they do need resolution that both parties can understand. Addressing complaints prevents misunderstandings from turning into larger conflicts and indicates that the organization is committed to protecting its workforce from harassment. So what can the nurse do in instances of sexual harassment? Be assertive. The recipient of unwanted behavior should inform the harasser directly that that conduct is unwelcome and has to stop. Again, make sure that your communications are consistent. Don't have your nonverbal contradict your verbal 
and your effective messages, etc. Make sure that you report to the management. The recipient should use any workplace complaint mechanism or grievance system that is already in place or available. Prevention is the best tool to eliminate sexual harassment in the workplace. But make sure that you are following the rules when you report complaints. Lateral violence is something else that we need to consider. It will occur between colleagues and it can involve physical, verbal, or emotional types of violence. Understand what bullying is and don't allow that to uh, escalate. Once a bully realizes that they have power over you, they will continue to abuse that power. So someone who has a higher level of authority than you tends to be the bully or maybe it is a person who feels that they they are in it's a person that is insecure and they want to make other people feel insecure so they tend to bully them and vertical violence occurs between pe people of unequal power Insidious aggression is aggressive behavior in the workplace and it can be more harmful than sexual harass harassment. It involves different types of issues. It can be incivility, interpersonal, or hostile acts that are hidden from other people. A lack of action on the part of nurse on the nurse is actually giving approval and permission for this type of behavior to continue. So as a nurse, you have the responsibility to act assertively with the cooperation of other nurses to advocate for a safe workplace.